black is one of those tricky colors, especially for an army on the tabletop, where unless a lot of time is spent to really accentuate the color and the highlights and the nuances, it's very difficult to make it look like it's actually painted at all. And I wanted to avoid just straight black with uh, neutral gray highlights. I wanted something with a little more depth and a little more color to it which is why I've gone for this uh, blue-black look on my Death Watch armor, because this is the primary color of my army. I wanted to have something just a little different than your typical flat black, something that would pop a little more on the tabletop, even if it is leaning more into the blue tones. I drew a lot of inspiration from Darren Latham's style of painting marines, although I haven't really um, gone as bright as his uh, black recipe does. Uh, I've kept it a little more neutral just so that one, I'm not spending forever on each model in the army. And two, I didn't want the black armor to be too reflective. Um, so I've copied some of the style in terms of his highlighting, as you can see on the foot, just not quite as far. Okay, so you can see that I've already painted a lot of the black armor on this marine. And to demonstrate, I'm going to be painting his left leg, which I have in a separate sub-assembly here. Now to paint this black recipe, you're going to need a couple of different colors. I'm using Vallejo's black, which is also uh, the base coat I airbrushed on this model. And then you're going to need a couple of colors. I've been trying um, AK's brand uh, or AK's line of acrylic paints, although you can use scale 75 or Vallejo's. It's up to you. Really, you just need like a dark blue, a medium blue, and then a bright blue. So for this one, I'm using dark sea blue, gray blue, and spectrum blue from AK. Normally, I would be using scale 75s. So it would be, uh, I believe, deep sea blue, and then um, bearing blue and arctic blue, I think, are the three colors equivalent. And then we're also going to be finalizing the black with a glaze of pterodon turquoise from Games Workshop, which we will dilute with Lamian medium. Now, you're going to... You can skip this step if you want the armor to look a little more um, black. This really pushes it into the, the blue tones and it creates that color nuance I'm looking for, but you can choose to skip this step and I'll show you what it looks like before I do the, um, or you can see what it'll look like before I do the contrast glaze. So you can decide which is the look that you want. So the first thing we want to figure out or that we want to block in is sort of where our highlights are going to go. And it's useful just to compare to where the model is going or where the piece is going to sit on the model to determine uh, where our highlights are going and to keep it consistent with the rest of the model. Our Space Marines limbs are actually a fun exercise in uh, highlighting and shading cylinders because that's all they really are. It's just a bunch of cylinders and some half spheres. I'm going to start by blocking in with a 50-50 mix of black and the dark sea blue. Just approximate bands of where I want the color to go. To go. So I know that his inside leg is going to be entirely hidden, so I'm not going to worry too much about that. I'm mainly focusing on the outside leg. And to keep it consistent, I'm going to maintain the same sort of highlight uh, band across the entire leg. So I know that I want this top circle, or top half of the circle to be a bit bright. I'm going to put a band there. And we're going to be putting some bands here. And rather than just do one um, straight highlight or one, one band of color, because I want some reflectivity to the armor, I'm going to be doing two bands. So if you actually take a look at this foot right here, what really sells the effect is this double band of highlight that I have running up and down the leg. So there's one stronger one here, but sharper, and then one wider, but not quite as bright, running down the center. And I'm going to duplicate that on this leg. Now 
Now, while I am being fairly rough at this stage, because I am just blocking in some rough highlights, and most of this will be covered up with our glazes, we're going to be smoothing it out with glazes afterwards. So I'm not too terribly concerned about neatness. The only thing I want to make sure is that I'm maintaining the blacks in all of my recesses and where the armor joints meet. I can go back in afterwards with some non oil or a black oil paint and clean up those recesses, but the less work I have to do later, the better. I just spend that little bit of extra time now to be neat, and that saves me a bit of hassle later. I'm going to put one band on the back of the leg. I guess it would be the side of the back half of the leg. And then I carry that down to the plates of the heel and the sole. So when that's dry, we're going to follow up with a pure dark sea blue, and we're going to start really reinforcing some of these um, bands of color. So on the uh, the toe of the boot, as well as the knee pad and the uh, cylinder on, I guess it would be the, the ankle bone, I don't want to just highlight um, the top like a, uh, like a sphere. I also want this, this sort of bright spot of highlight, which you can really see right here. It's a bit of, it's like a dot of, of spectral light off of the uh, the edge, which we'll be highlighting as well. So as I am blocking in and um, highlighting these bands of color, I'm going to be accounting for where I'm placing that dot, and I'm going to start painting in uh, the circle for where it goes. And so as we highlight, we're going to highlight progressively into the center to create that, uh, that spot of light. Now keep in mind, I'm only doing that for the cylinder, the uh, the spheres. I don't want that uh, spot of light in the uh, more cylindrical elements. Although you could paint those in if you want to. Now that we've blocked that in, it's time to start highlighting these. And to do that, we're going to start mixing in progressive amounts of our gray blue into our dark sea blue. Now we're going to keep highlighting these bands until we reach about a 50-50 mix of the two blues. And at that point, that's as bright as we're going to highlight these bands. And then we proceed with our edge highlighting. I'm going to dilute my paints a little more, and I'm just going to take my time and really feather in my highlights to help uh, smooth out the transitions.
Okay, I'm fairly happy with this at this stage. So what I'm gonna do quickly is just compare um, relative brightness to some of the other parts of the model. And if I feel that they're, they're at a good spot, which I believe they are, I think I can go a little brighter on his hip plate. Okay, so now before we proceed to our edge highlighting step, we're gonna do a few glazes of our dark sea blue and then our dark sea blue uh, black 50-50 mix. And we're gonna keep the paint fairly diluted. We're just looking to um, glaze over some of these, these edges and smooth out our transitions. <laughs> Now, I'm not looking to get these 100% perfectly smooth. I'm looking mainly to just knock back some of the harshness of some of these edges. And then we're going to follow that up with our 50-50 dark blue black mix. So now it's time to proceed to our edge highlighting step. So I'm gonna switch over to my fine detail brush. And we're gonna start by highlighting every edge and every panel with our 50-50 mix of dark sea blue and gray blue. Now the reason I'm doing every edge and not just the top surface is one, it's to help one well, define every edge. Um, also because I want to help highlight some of the reflectivity of this metal. Highlighting every edge helps to simulate sort of the ambient and reflected light that is happening and bouncing off, uh, that's happening around the armor or the marine and bouncing off the armor. This step is the most tedious of the model, but I feel that uh, doing this and doing it well really helps sell the effect of the armor and it really makes the model pop. So it's worth just taking your time, um, finding or reaching that quiet place of Zen 
and being really neat with your highlights. Where we want our spots to go, we're also going to dot the center. We're just going to slowly layer in our, our highlights there to create that reflected spot.
now that I've done a highlight on every single edge, uh, it's now time to follow up with a stronger highlight. And we're just gonna start mixing in more and more of our gray blue until we reach pretty much pure gray blue. And for these highlights, we're really gonna be focusing on now the edges that are directly facing our light that would catch the most highlights. So with the boot mounted in this position, for example, we're gonna get highlights along this edge here, uh, the front of the this panel right here. We're gonna dot our circles a little more as our specular spots. Gonna get some on the top of the cylinder. And you wanna keep your paint very diluted. When it's nice and thin, you're able to pull the color out and create a nice smoother transition as you highlight. If your paint is too thick and uh, the highlight, uh, you can't glaze it out, it ends up looking a little jarring because you end up seeing the uh, the different color steps, which admittedly for a tabletop army, it's not a big deal if you can see the different transitions because the overall effect, especially when you see the army as a whole, the, our eyes and our the way our brain interprets the information, it's going to naturally smooth out some of those transitions for us anyways. But I want these models to hold up much nicer or hold up well on close inspection as well. So I'm just spending a little extra time making sure that my highlights are uh, smooth. Now, if you end up making a bit of a mistake, uh, you end up paint, getting some paint into the, the recesses or some of the joints, don't worry about it. Don't waste time correcting back and forth. We'll do a once over pass afterwards with either black paint or a black oil, and we'll just correct those issues after. I'm also going to catch or place a dot of a brighter highlight on some of the corners of these armor plates where I want a little bit more uh, of that sharp ping, uh, the color specular highlight to happen.
So now that I've done my final highlights, or I've done my uh, pure gray-blue highlights, I want to start thinking about some of the um, chips and introducing some, some battle damage. Now, you can keep the armor clean and skip the step if you want, but I've added a bit of very subtle uh, scratches, just a few here and there, to add a bit more uh, detail and sort of like a textural element to the surface. I don't want them to be 100% pure parade formation clean. I want them to have a, a bit of life and a bit of a narrative to them. So to do this, we're just going to take our gray blue. We're going to mix in just a touch of our uh, deep sea blue or dark sea blue to darken it a bit. And we're just going to paint some very fine scratches where um, this guy would receive some battle damage. Now, because of the way he is, is seated, we're mostly going to see some of the scuffs on the uh, bottoms of the feet where he naturally steps on the ground, and then probably along this front panel where uh, enemy fire will just naturally bounce off his armor. We're going to be finalizing our highlighting step by adding some very bright spots of color, and these are going to be our specular highlights. So really, we're not aiming to highlight every surface or every edge with this. Um, we're going to keep this very, very refined, and we're focusing on the dots that we had established in our highlighting step where we want our um, specular points to be. And then where these our band highlights meet edges, that's where we're going to focus uh, some some spots and then transition uh, some highlights in. So we're going to start with a 50-50 mix of spectrum blue and gray blue. Keep our paints nice and thin. And 
And you can see that as we progress through our different highlighting steps, it does get faster and faster because we're highlighting less and less. Really the most tedious part of this phase is the initial uh, highlight where we're highlighting every single edge. But as we progress and we get uh, brighter and brighter, it does get very easy because we're only just picking out some bright spots of color. And then we add some final spots with pure spectrum blue. Now, where some of the chips uh, from our battle damage stage have crossed over um, edges where plates meet. I'm also going to put a dot of color or a dot of the spectrum blue to represent uh, a little bit of a corner that's going to catch some brighter, some brighter highlights. Okay, and then now we're going to touch up the armor. Uh, I have overpainted a little bit in some of the crevices and then my highlights have gone over a little thick in some spots. So we're just gonna take diluted black and we're just gonna gently glaze it into and touch up some spots where we've overpainted or we wanna neaten up our highlights.
Now, you can choose to leave the armor uh, at this stage. You don't have to do the pterodon turquoise uh, glaze. So you can see that it's a it's a fairly darker look. Um, it's not quite as um, heavy on the blue tone. But you can see that if you compare the two the two legs, this non-glazed one is a little flatter in the in the darker shadowed areas because it is just pure black in there in some of the deepest parts. It, it's lacking that bit of tone and that nuance. And what I like about the contrast glaze over the entire armor is it helps to smooth out or it adds a little extra uh, layer of smoothing out for our transitions. It helps to hide some of the rougher spots and ties everything together uh, with the one tone. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our Lamian medium and I'm going um, two or three parts medium to one part contrast for this. I don't want the turquoise glaze to be too heavy. Okay, and then we're just going to lightly glaze over the entire thing. And you can see that once the contrast glaze dries, all of our trans transitions have been smoothed out. All of our, our colors have been um, unified with this one tone, this one tint of color on top. And we've added that subtle depth to our black. It gives it a very nice richness I really love. And then once our glaze is dry, um, we're going to go back in with pure spectrum blue. And we're just going to uh, touch up some of our spots and some of our, our specular highlights. This was because the glaze uh, of pterodon turquoise does knock back some of the, the intensity of our highlights. I want to just go back in with my spectrum blue and just reestablish some really bright points of color. Now Darren Latham takes his highlights almost to pure white and I felt like that was a little too bright for me. Um, I wasn't, or I didn't think I would like how, how bright and reflective his armor uh, version ends up looking. So I'm only going up to Spectrum Blue, which is, is a very pale, um, almost baby blue, but not quite as quite as saturated, not quite as rich. And I, I, I like the overall look, the brightness that it ends up having. Okay, where are these corners? In the armor R, I'm just adding a couple spots of color. Okay. And then I'm going to take some, some black and I'm going to actually 
help to reinforce some of these these chips and this battle damage. So typically, my rule of thumb is if the chip passes over an edge, I paint a black line. And I'm going to paint that line just adjacent, right beside and touching that highlight on the uh, side that's closest towards the light on my light source. And what that's going to do is it's going to make the scratch actually appear deeper and a little more, more realistic for some of these deeper scratches. I won't do it to all of them, just some of the larger ones I want to draw attention to. And that's how I do the black armor on my Death Watch. So um, to finish this leg, I'm just going to paint the trim uh, in the same gold as the rest of the model, and then I will attach the leg. 